Hi, it's Laura again. Um, I wanted to give you an update. I wasn't able to do it yesterday, just too exhausted. <laughs> um, but today, instead of um, sharing more about the news, I thought I would just share a little bit about what our day has been like so that you get an idea of uh, what we do and who we serve. Uh, many uh, people who are following now, following us now are very new to our ministry, um, and so we kind of uh, feel like we need to share some of that background information. But today, just to give you an idea of, of what our day has been like, Mark is an early bird, and he was up at 5 a.m., and he was starting to cook enchiladas. Um, he cooked one large pan, uh, which is for the emergency workers' dinner that we serve tonight. Um, and then he did another pan for the rehab center here, David's house, uh, which we'll eat tomorrow. Um, each pan is probably about 15 to 20 liters of food, so that's about four to five gallons each. Um, and as he's finishing this and putting it all together, he's also cooking up breakfast for the whole house. And right now that's eight people uh, because two of our refugee guests have been called back to work. Um, and uh, they may be back with us in a while, but we'll, we'll wait and see. So eight people he's cooking breakfast for. The men tend to get up around 7 o'clock in the morning, um, and they take care of our animals, and they do housework. So as far as our animals, we have five sows, which most of them are pregnant now, and one boar. Um, we have uh, three male rabbits uh, with eight female rabbits, and two of those females have uh, six bunnies each, so 12 bunnies. Um, and as soon as we do our next vaccination, which will be later this week, and uh, treating them for parasites, which is kind of generic, then we'll breed the females again with the males, the ones that don't have the bunnies. Um, we have over 40 chickens. Uh, that includes three roosters, and we get um, almost 30 eggs a day now, it seems like, um, give or take a little bit here and there. We have uh, 23 new chicks that are just days old, and they're out in the barn under a heating lamp. And once they get to be about a month old, uh, we'll start introducing them to the regular flock. We have a male turkey duck, or Muscovy duck, um, and four females. Uh, and they're, they kind of have the body of a duck, but their meat is more like turkey. It's, it's not all the fat that a duck would have. And I love them because they're very quiet. They go... They don't do the wah, 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 wah. We do have geese. We have one male and four females. And one of the geese is starting to, or one of the, yeah, one of the geese is starting to sit on eggs now. It's a little bit early. Not sure if they're going to be viable, but usually early spring is when they start to sit, whereas the turkey ducks are a little bit later. Anyway, um, I lead the morning Bible study before breakfast, and our one of our guests uh, uh, translates for me. We start about 8 a.m., and we go till 9 a.m., and right now we're studying what's called Master Life, and it's about our relationship with God and our relationship with people. Um, and today we looked at a number of really interesting stories about things that God asked people to do that just seem kind of crazy. Um, and then we also talked a lot about obedience today, uh, obedience to God and, and following through and doing what he wants us to do, even though it may seem kind of out there. Um, while we ate breakfast, Mark headed out to the bazaar in the local town. Uh, he wasn't able to find any fresh vegetables and greens at the big city store. Um, they're just getting less and less in the store. They're not being resupplied. Uh, surprisingly, he found quite a bit at the local bazaar, and so he was able to buy a lot of the vegetables, uh, parsley and dill, the greens that go into our soups and things like that, and he bought salo. Now, salo is pig fat, and here in Ukraine, they either freeze it and slice it up very thinly, or they salt it, and then they eat it uh, a lot of times on dark bread with garlic. Um, and it's just kind of one of the things that most people eat here. So we uh, very often buy sala for the men. Um, after breakfast, the house crew started washing the dishes, and the outside crew was picked up by Pastor Sergei, and they went and helped him cut down some trees at his village house, and they returned back to the center before lunch. Uh, Vaska, uh, one of the house crew guys, uh, decided to be very uncooperative, got loud with Mark, um, and then he decided to leave the program. Uh, the other men said that he had been talking that mor this morning about leaving the program, um, and so he probably created the situation in order to justify leaving, which we see quite often. He's an older guy, 
actually only one or two years older than me, but it looks 10 years older than me, uh, spent a lot of that time in prison. So kind of a hardened kind of guy. So um, while I cooked up the soup for our street feeding today, um, I notified the local police, the mayor of our village, and the person who referred him to us from a prison ministry. Um, and so just uh, the person who referred him, I kind of gave him a background uh, on what has happened and why Bosco decided to leave. I closed out his uh, electronic file and documented uh, why he decided to leave. Um, and closed the file out and moved it from our active cases to our departed cases. And then I did the same thing with the hard copy, uh, moving it. Um, I was responsible for making the soup today for our street feeding program. Mark and I kind of take turns at it. Basically, we cook up about 80 liters of soup, which is over 21 gallons of soup. Um, and we cook it up in a 40 liter pot and a 30 liter pot, but our 30 liter pot is occupied by cabbage rolls right now. So I had to do a concentrate in the 40 liters, split it into our two 40 liter canisters and then add additional water. And then we threw macaroni in right before we left, um, or pasta, sorry, <laughs> uh, pasta. Also do 40 liters of hot tea, which is over 10 gallons. And it goes in another canister that we put up on the stove and heat everything up. Um, uh, I got together the box of supplies. Actually, we have two boxes of supplies that go. One is for the soup, salt and pepper, the soup cups, the gloves for the men, and then a bigger box, which has all the, the ladles and, um, all those kind of things, the cups for the tea, um, uh, my apron that I usually wear, uh, a number of other supplies, oh, spoons and, and, and napkins and those kind of things. So I got all those ready. Um, Mark returned home and uh, we cut up all the different veggies and greens that were going to go into a salad. The men helped with that. And then Natasha did the greens that went into the soup. Um, and with the help of the men, because it was radishes and cucumbers, they clean them and then they cut them. Natasha made up uh, a salad for the house here for tonight and one for the emergency workers and then there's some for tomorrow as well. Um, uh, in the middle of this the village nurse called and Natasha and I talked with her. Uh, we had been asking about what equipment she needs and what other kind of medical supplies that she needs so we kind of went through that. The mayor was on the end of the phone with her and kind of worked through it all and got a, a really long list. Um, I took a moment to get the box ready for the emergency workers that we put food in, serving utensils, napkin, forks, all those kind of things. Natasha, um, a lot of her young students, their parents want the, the kids to have some routine, something normal. So she started having online classes with a, a number of her students. Um, but she did uh, have a break where she was able to, to pull out the soup and get it heated up for the men and do some hot sandwiches for them. Um, uh, so that was really good. Um, when while the the soup and the fee the, the soup and the tea, I'm really tired. Finished heating up at the canisters. I started researching some of the items that the nurse wanted, finding some quotes, uh, finding some vendors who might be able to provide them here in Ukraine versus outside of Ukraine. Uh, Mark ate lunch early because he uh, gets the different canisters and wraps them up in blankets and stuff to keep them warm while they go into the city. Uh, we eat lunch at one o'clock and Natasha and the men had soup and hot sandwiches and I had leftovers because of those things, um, some of the spices I'm allergic to and I can't eat. Um, after lunch, uh, Yura and Slava helped load everything into the van. Mark turned on the oven and got the emergency workers food into the oven. Um, I got cleaned up and changed my clothes. Uh, Natasha had another English lesson and the house crew started washing the dishes and cleaning up the kitchen because you can imagine the mess <laughs> that we leave behind in the kitchen after, after all that cooking. Uh, Slava went with Mark and I into the city for our street feeding. Again, we fed the 80 liters of soup, 40 liters of hot tea, and 10 loaves of bread, and we did all of that in 30 minutes. So we've got our routine down pretty quickly, and, and um, our regulars know the process, and they help the new people that come along. And, and we did see quite a few new people again this time. 
uh, when we first arrived, uh, my uh, parents had called me on Messenger and we had a, a video call. And so I kind of turned it around and some of the people that were coming up to the feeding, I said, you know, this is my parents. And they were like, oh, thank you so much for letting your daughter stay here in Ukraine, you know, and for her help here, you know, and a lot of them, we, we know their names, uh, the ones that come routinely. And then I just kind of turned the camera around again and showed my parents kind of the location where we feed. And then as we got ready to to um, start feeding the group said a big hello. You know, all of our guests said a big hello to my parents, but they got to see that we feed between the main train, train station and then the post office. And there's a tent right there that they've set up for refugees. Um, and that's where I think we might be seeing some of the new faces from. But I had to say goodbye because we needed to get to feeding. Um, and I'll be putting up some pictures. We don't take pictures often because we want to respect the dignity of these people, especially the homeless. Um, but today I, I asked them, is it okay if I take your picture? And as long as they agree, then we do it. And I explained that, you know, people in America are concerned about what's going on here in Ukraine and that people are being fed and taken care of. And so they want to see their faces. And most of them agreed with it. Um, the men who stayed home had their quiet time of reading and writing, uh, the, the Bible that they have to do every day, and their 12-step work. They also did some of their afternoon chores, you know, like cleaning garlic and cleaning the bunkhouse and where they live and those kind of things. As soon as we were done feeding, we packed up and headed to Vicka's house, which is uh, one of the people who lived with us, but she had to go back to work. And we took her some of the cabbage rolls because she helped me make all those, those two huge pots. And so we wanted to make sure that she got some. So she and I chatted just for a, a minute or two, um, you know, and uh, we hit the road driving back home because we had to get back through all those roadblocks. Um, to go and feed the emergency workers. So when we got home, the men know where we're going to be home. They've got the gate open, pull in. They all come and help unload everything. Uh, Valeri had cooked up some more tea for the emergency workers, and so we poured that right into the canister that had just been emptied from feeding uh, on the street. Um, the other men wrapped up the tea, uh, again the canister, and then the dinner, and got all the boxes and everything loaded into the van. Um, I helped Valeri, uh, who's our kind of our head house guy, uh, get the, the dinner, which was cabbage rolls, into a pot and into the oven that the dinner, the enchiladas, had just come out of. Um, then Slava and I jumped back in the van and we headed to town through the, the roadblocks, uh, delivered the dinner to the emergency workers. I chatted with a number of them uh, for just a minute or two and then we hit the road back coming back home. Mark finally got a moment to relax and checked his computer and caught up on different things. Um, when I got home, again, the all, men, all the men came out. They unloaded all of the dirty dishes and containers from the night before's dinner. Um, and uh, they started getting everything ready for dinner. The men went off and fed some of the animals, and I got a chance to finally sit down and breathe. Uh, we gathered around the table. Um, just around, uh, just before 6 p.m. when we eat, and we chatted a little bit, and then we prayed, and we ate dinner. Uh, after dinner, the guys washed the dishes again, third time in the day. Um, the outside crew did their final feeding and checks on the different animals, and Mark and I talked with a church uh, contact in America um, in a uh, campaign that they've been doing for us. Um, in the evening, it's usually free time. Uh, the men were watching Legend of Sleepy Hollow the last time I walked out there. Natasha had uh, another lesson, but she has a couple prayer groups that she participates in and, and praying for Ukraine right now. Since Mark is the early bird, he goes to bed early. And so by usually 7.30, 8 o'clock, he's in bed. As for me, I'm the night owl, so I answered all of our inquiries uh, on email and social media that I haven't been able to do through the moments through the day, and some of them can add up to like a hundred of them that I do. I coordinated the uh, boxes that are being sent to us with some specific supplies. Um, I talked to two different medical supply companies and their representatives about the equipment that we think we want to buy for the uh, village nurse and the clinic there. The doctors come and visit, and oftentimes they don't have equipment that they need there. So we're going to try and help do that. Uh, coordinated getting some medical supplies, uh, medicines, um, gauze, those kind of things, because the pharmacies here are just wiped out. You know, so we have some friends who are missionaries. They're kind of in Romania buying a bunch of stuff and they're bringing it back to Ukraine. So they're going to buy a whole list of things for us that we can uh, uh, reimburse them for and that they'll we'll give to our, our village nurse here. Um, talked with one of my sisters. She saw that I was online and we just had a short chat. 
Um, and I think I've talked with all of my sisters within the past week and my parents. So that's uh, really, really good. Um, and now I'm doing this video. Once I'm done with this, I'll post the video. I'm kind of the social media guru in our team. And um, I'll be doing typing up an update for our GoFundMe and adding some pictures. And usually I make it into bed 11 or 12 o'clock um, and get to sleep after uh, 12 o'clock. Too many years working as a police officer, midnight shifts. <laughs> uh, I just am that night owl. And of course, through all of this, we are modeling Christ to everybody that we come into contact with. We're training up the men at the rehab center as we live life with them hand in hand. Uh, this includes looking for unhealthy coping mechanisms or defense mechanism, mechanisms or other uh, processes in their life and helping them to see the problem, the, how it's unhealthy, uh, what uh, is a good way to do it, and then giving them practical exercises where they get to exercise these skills um, that we're teaching them. And of course, through it all, we just love on them. Sometimes it's tough love, but we love on them. Um, and of course, Mark and I have to find moments in our day that we can have quiet time with the Lord, uh, not just walking the day with him and constantly talking to him in our heads and our hearts, but just have that moment where we can sit and read the Bible for ourselves and to commune with him. And of course, without him, we wouldn't have the power or the energy or the focus to do any of this. So that in a nutshell, a long, big nutshell, is kind of what we went through today and kind of what our days are like. So...